With 27 million consumers, the traditional medicine trade in South Africa contributes an estimated 2.9 billion rand to the economy. But the supply of wild medicinal plant stocks is declining, and highly valued species are becoming inaccessible due to extinctions and rapidly rising market prices. I'm sure you're aware that South Africa is, is a consuming community. They consume equally the same with traditional natural medicines as well. People visit um, traditional health practitioners between, between four to eight times a year, and the services that they pay, you know, the, the, the services that they get from traditional healers are all paid from out of pocket. The average traditional medicine consumer uses 750 grams of medicinal plants per year. This means that an estimated 20,000 tons of indigenous plants are harvested from grasslands, forests, woodlands and thickets in eastern South Africa every year. There's even estimates that that can go up to 70,000 tons a year. Um, and I think in that sense it's not really sustainable, but especially when you look at bark harvesting, um, root harvesting, or a lot of the medicinal plants are bulbous plants, so the whole plant is actually harvested and utilised and destroyed. And for those plants, um, on the long term, it will not be sustainable if we cannot, to some extent, replace material. The sustainable use of medicinal plants used to be facilitated by several indirect controls, such as taboos, seasonal and social restrictions in gathering, and the nature of plant gathering material. And those traditions were put in place to be able to sustain the material. For example, one of it would be that you only harvest bark from the western or the eastern side of a tree. And because of this um, incentive in terms of money that, that came into the system, people are harvesting and over-harvesting. The growth in terms of the amount of users um, and also in terms of commercial exploitation and all of this combined and, and the demand increasing for these plants is, is, is really putting pressure on natural populations. According to UNESCO, employment opportunities for traditional medicinal practitioners have increased with the stresses of urban life. And traditional plant materials, which bring luck in finding employment, guard against jealousy, love charms and aphrodisiacs, are becoming more popular. And the other thing is that, you know, such, such development, contrary to people's thinking and belief, is that, you know, the consumption of traditional medicine does not necessarily come from rural areas. It also comes from your affluent communities, which includes the Sentins, the Rosebanks, Rose Banks, you know, all of those communities. Nearly 128 million treatments are prescribed annually, and the heavy reliance on traditional medicine is expected to grow. Alternatives such as cultivation have been suggested to improve the self-sufficiency of traditional medicinal practitioners and take harvesting pressures off wild stocks. But the success of cultivation also depends on the attitude of traditional medicinal practitioners to cultivated material, and this varies from place to place. As traditional health practitioners, we do not want to so much, you know, modernize, you know, the propagation of plants. We believe that the manner in which plants have been propagated for long, you know, in the wild, that that was the best thing. Because now plants still wants to communicate with birds. Let's not eliminate the plant from the cosmic. And then they, it defeats the purpose. Usually the medicinal compounds in the plants are related to stress. So if the plant have drought or when it grows in nature, it's not in this nice environment and then these compounds are produced. So there's also methods to induce stress in a cultivation area. So maybe you, when you propagate, you treat them well so that you can get enough material and then you stress them afterwards so that you are sure that the, that, that the strength is still there for the healers. But a sustainable industry needs to generate cooperation and understanding between all role players, including government. The government certainly has a role, it takes a role. Um, there is prosecution, as I said, you know, regularly. Um, but the problem, <clears throat> the underlying problem is uh, this is and can be seen um, as an attack on African culture. Um, because in the past, with a large fault, you know, open for exploitation, um, these sorts of practices were sustainable um, until now when there are just too many of us and, you know, too much publicity given to the benefits of traditional uh, medicines and um, the profits that can be made from them. Uh, so that has led us into a state of unsustainability. Um, but changing it um, risks being seen, is being seen as an attack on African culture. 
and this affects the sustainability and the ability of government to prosecute or uh, regulate uh, effectively. While stakeholders decide on the best approach, in Mamelodi West, Dr. Ephraim Abena is taking the importance of the sector's sustainability to grassroots level and has cleared a dumping ground to harvest plants and educate the community. I had two rehabilitated on behalf of traditional healers. They are there not for myself, not for my wife, but for the community at large. It is about to receive 1.5 million to just to protect this area. It is so important, it was important, it is important, it's still going to be very, very much important.